I'm sorry I've been lying to you guys. It has not been intentional. This is not a clickbait video, but it might be a little over-dramatized. So, <laughs> most people refer to this slimy dude right here as a SCOBY. I usually call it a cellulose mat. So, it is made up of cellulose, and cellulose is a byproduct of the kombucha fermentation process. That's what rises to the top and forms that protective layer, which most people call SCOBY. So SCOBY stands for a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. People have also said symbiotic culture, symbiotic community, basically meaning you have a bunch of organisms living together. So you have the bacteria and you have the yeast, they're living in close proximity to each other and they survive off of one another. That's what SCOBY means. So the lie that I've been telling you is this cellulose mat right here, what most people call SCOBY, is not actually the SCOBY. The real SCOBY is the kombucha because that's what has the bacteria and the yeast in it. The cellulose mat does hold some liquid, but it's not enough to start a batch because that's why we add the starter to The cellulose mat is also referred to as a biofilm or a pellicle. A pellicle is a thin layer of protein that supports cell membrane. Biofilm is a collective of one or more microorganisms that can grow on many different surfaces. They also grow when you make beer. Now with all that being said, the pellicle, biofilm, cellulose mat, or SCOBY, whatever you wanna call it, is still not without purpose because it provides oxygen to the brew. I've used with and without the pellicle in my brews. I went a good year without using the pellicle. And instead of using one cup of starter tea, these are gallon jars, instead of using one cup of starter tea, I would use two cups of starter tea. And the brew, I would say, is just a bit mellower. It's not as strong. It's like when you're making coffee kombucha. So coffee kombucha, if you're not familiar with it, I'll leave some videos down below. It's powerful, it's strong stuff. So if you're new to making it, then I suggest you use just starter tea to make it. And if you're a little more acclimated to the taste and you know what to expect, then using the, the pellicle or the SCOBY because it just makes it stronger. And I'm going to assume safely, I believe, <laughs> that that's because of the added oxygen adding to the, the making of the carbonation. So I just wanted to get this off my chest. I will probably still refer to it as a SCOBY, but you may hear me say pellicle or biofilm or cellulose mat. I usually go back and forth between SCOBY and cellulose mat. But what it boils down to for you is whatever you like. So if you want to keep calling it SCOBY, keep calling it SCOBY. If you want to keep using that in your brew, then go ahead and use it. I'd love to know what you guys think and what is your personal preference. Uh, please leave me a comment down below. I try and respond to every single comment and I think I do a pretty good job. Sometimes I miss one and it, so it might be a couple weeks late, but let's, uh, let's have a conversation about this. Let's see what you guys are into. Here's the video I mentioned earlier about two ways to make coffee kombucha. One is with the cellulose matter SCOBY and one is without, it breaks down the differences. And then down here below is a video on on how to make a SCOBY hotel, or you can call it a pellicle hotel. If you found any value in this video, please give it a like, and also please share it with your kombucha friends. Let's spread the good word of kombucha.